got to lift that seat up to let a passenger on board. Some people think the whole world should just get up and move aside for them. Wake up, lady. Another work day. Mm. Want coffee? No, thanks, babe. I gotta get to work kind of early today. What's that? Oh, it's a computer program I've written. Should save the company thousands. I don't like that. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, I called the hotel. Our room's been confirmed. Yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you mean we're finally going to have that wildly romantic weekend you've been hounding me about for all these years? <laughs> yeah. Don't you think we deserve it? A lot. But I got to get to work to pay for this wild weekend. You want to meet me for lunch? Uh, I'll say about 12.30, Ramones. Mm -hmm. I think I can make that. Sounds good. Bye. Bye. Got to look. Lon Chaney star. Boy, this guy scared the bejeebers out of me when I was a kid. Man of a thousand faces. Well, look, here's another one of my favorites. Michael Landon. Never heard of him. What are you kidding? Bonanza, Little House on the Prairie. Sorry, it doesn't ring a bell. I keep forgetting. You've been dead for 40 years. Tell me, don't you have enough pictures yet? Not until I find Betty Davis. I promised my sister, next time I was in Hollywood, I'd get a picture of Betty Davis' star. You know, we can find it a lot faster if you use the stuff and tell me where it is. It's a block and a half from here. Well, I'm gonna have. Why don't you tell me that an hour ago? Because we got an appointment to meet somebody here. Oh. Oh. Hey, pal, let me give you a hand there. There we go. What do you like that? <laughs> Try to be nice to people. Think I would have killed that guy to say thank you? Now, why should he? I helped him up the curve. What do you think someone like that would be if it wasn't for people like me? It's people like you that built the curve. 
Come on, we got a bus to catch. We're gonna meet somebody here. We just did. Ma'am, we've gotta lift that seat up to let a passenger on board. Some people think the whole world should just get up and move aside for them. What's the matter? This darn lift, we've been having trouble with it. Come on, I gotta get off. I work here. I'm sorry, sir, it's broken down. I'll have to call it in. Now, wait a minute. How long is it gonna take this time? I have got to get to work. So do I, driver. How long are we going to be sitting here because of him? We're not. I'll call it in and a maintenance truck will meet us en route. Come on, if you keep going, I'm gonna have to get another bus to bring me back here. I'll be late for work. I've gotta get off this bus. Excuse me, driver. My uh, friend and I can carry the man off the bus. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't allow that company policy. What policy? Look, what if you drop him? Who do you think he's going to sue? You or the bus company? What if you hurt your back? Who are you going to sue? Get the picture? I'm sorry, sir. If you want to file a complaint with the bus company. What good is that going to do? Is the bus company going to get me another job when I lose this one? You know, you ought to show a little gratitude. The city has spent millions of dollars on this equipment just to get you people around. What more do you want? I want it to work. Charlie, can't you just use the stuff and fix that? Little? No, you're supposed to be late for work. Why? So he'll get fired. Get fired? Why would the boss want him fired? Because Mr. Seacrest has a more important job waiting for him. He just doesn't know it yet. Time to kill. I never knew you'd drink in the middle of the day. What are we celebrating? I was fired today, Patty. The lift on the bus broke down again, and I couldn't get off. I was two hours late to work. But it wasn't your fault. I mean, didn't you explain? Yeah, I explained. I gave him handicap excuse number 13, failure of public transportation. He was just tired of hearing it. But, Wayne, anyone could be late for work a few times. It's not that, Patty. You don't understand. They were looking for an excuse to fire me. I don't believe that. I mean, maybe you're just being overly sensitive. No. No. I lost a bearing on my wheel. Remember I told you about that? And my chair wouldn't roll. I overheard some guy talking to the boss. The guy says, uh, what if there's a fire? Who's going to carry old Wayne down five flights of stairs? 
Now, that got the boss to thinking real good, worrying, you know, about the insurance and all that stuff. I knew right then my days were numbered. What about that computer program that's supposed to save the company thousands? <laughs> you should have been there. I, I put two real good scratches in each one of those discs. And I sailed those floppies through the room till it looked like an explosion <laughs> in some Frisbee factory. You know, this weekend can come at a better time. Patty, let's not, all right? Wayne Seacrest, you've been promising me this time together forever. We made a deposit on the room, and I'm going. Now, are you going with me? Or are you going to wallow in self-pity for two long, miserable days, alone? Hmm? I got all the luggage in the car. Great. I'll be with you in just a minute, babe. Something wrong with your chair? Nah. Haven't you ever heard about the squeaky wheel getting the grease? Yes? Mr. Seacrest, I'm Jonathan Smith. This is Mark Gordon. We wondered if we could talk to your husband for a minute. Wayne? Hey, man. These gentlemen want to speak with you. They're with the Handicap Awareness Group. <laughs> Don't need them. I'm well aware that I'm handicapped. We're with action to advance the handicap, Mr. Seacrest. I'm Jonathan Smith. This is Mark Gordon. Well, you caught us at kind of a bad time, fellas. We were uh, just on our way out the door. Okay. What can I do for you? We need your help. It's a good one. I was, I'm sorry to laugh, but uh, I can't even help myself. I was fired from my job today. So right now, I'm feeling kind of useless to anyone. Oh, why were you fired? I suppose the reason was for being late, but the lift on the bus wouldn't work again. Well, that's just the kind of thing we're working on. See, we need people to help demonstrate the problems of the handicapped, you know, access to public buildings, restrooms, buses. Look, I'm sorry, guys. I'm no crusader. I can just barely take care of my wife and myself. I'm not going to take on any more new burdens right now. Well, you know what they say, Mr. Seacrest, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. You know, all we want to do is make a little noise right now, draw attention, make people more aware of the problem. No, I'm sorry. Look, Patty and I are on our way out to the Bridgemore Hotel right now for a weekend of fun and relaxation. Beyond that, I make no commitments. Uh, we understand. Look, let me, uh, let me leave you my card just in case you change your mind. You have a nice weekend. Thanks, we will.
You've got it. Fire alarm. Is there a fire? I don't know, but I'm not hanging around to find out. Now, the elevator shut down during a fire, so use the stairs. Everyone, it was a false alarm, no fire. Thanks. You're good, man. scared since Nam. In fact, I don't think I've ever been that scared. At least in Nam, you just had to watch out for yourself and your buddies. Last night, I had to protect Patty, and I couldn't even get her to leave me. I could just see us burning up on those stairs. I've never felt so helpless in my whole life. Now, we in our organization hear stories like yours all the time. That's why I called you, Jonathan. I'm ready to help. What can I do? Madam Mayor, we at the Thatcher Corporation are proud indeed to have you rededicate the Thatcher Building. As you know, this structure was built in 1923 by my late grandfather and founder of the company, Hiram Thatcher. And if he were here today, I feel certain that he would I'd be say this is the audience we've been looking for. I guess it's time for me to go on stage. Good luck. Has been restored to its original elegance, and we'll enjoy another 65 years as a landmark in our community. And now, may I present to you the scissors to cut the ribbon, Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor, I have something to say. Hey, you. I wish you'd let us take you to a hospital. I'm all right. I've survived a lot more than a bump on the head. Well, in that case, uh, maybe you can tell us what happened out there. I came here for a job, Mr. Thatcher. If you'd had a ramp, I would have come down the easy way. Looked to me like you rolled down on purpose. Nobody pushed him. Is that right? Did you come down those steps on your own? I was just trying to get your attention. You have. I can tell a phony lawsuit a mile away, young man. Are these your uh, witnesses? Just relax, Mr. Thatcher. I'm not here to sue anyone. Well, then what is this all about? You've done a great job restoring this old building, sir. You spent a lot of time and money on it. But I am just a little ticked off that you didn't think about me. Why didn't you make a way so handicapped people could get into your building? Why didn't we do that? I guess that uh, we just never thought about it. That's why we're here, to get you and people like you to think about it. Build us a ramp, Mr. Thatcher. Put in automatic doors. Widen the bathroom stalls. 
That's all we ask. Goodbye. Wait. Now, you've had your say. Let me have mine. How about a job? We could use a man like you around here. Doing what? I don't know. What, what is it that you do? I'm a computer programmer. Well, then that's what you'll do for us. You'd give me a job just like that. You'd hire me without checking my work experience or my references. I don't see why not. I'm afraid I'm going to have to turn you down, Mr. Thatcher. I want a job, not a handout. Uh, just a minute. Who is that man, anyway? If you watch the 7 o'clock news, Mr. Thatcher, you'll find out. The Thatcher building was the scene of a most courageous, or some might say foolhardy, stunt by a disabled American veteran today when the double amputee drove his wheelchair off the front of the building. It occurred during rededication of the newly renovated building, just as the mayor and the president of the Thatcher Corporation were about to cut the ribbon. Why did you do it, Mr. Seacrest? I did it to draw attention to the plight of handicapped people. I'm real tired of everyone giving lip service to the problems and blessed little ever being done about it. There's a saying that the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Just call me squeaky. Well, that's it from the Thatcher building. I call you a lunatic. This is Gail Lewis reporting from downtown. Wayne Seacrest, whatever was in your mind to pull a stunt like that? I don't know, babe. I was just sitting up there trying to get somebody's attention. And I just wanted to make a speech is all. And this guard came for me. And I could see the whole thing going into the dumper. and. I, I just pushed off. <laughs> Jonathan, is that the kind of thing your group promotes? Oh, no, this is not exactly what we had in mind. Well, you promised me not to do anything like that again. What, do you think I'm crazy? You've seen the last of my daredevil career. I want to tell you, you made some people set up and take notice, so that's just what we needed. I don't know, Mark. You know, maybe it was a slow news day and they needed some filler and I gave it to them. You know, Whacked out Viet Vet takes dive film at 11. I got a sick feeling that tomorrow I'm going to be yesterday's news and nothing will have changed. Good morning. Uh, you sound like a sour tuna fish. What's the matter? I just woke up and realized I don't have a job to go to. It's not a very good feeling. Did you get the paper? Ta-da! Let me see that. Yesterday's news, huh? You're on the front page. I don't believe it. They were talking about you on the radio this morning. People were calling in. You got a new name now, Squeaky. Hello. Yes, it is. I'm Mrs. Seacrest. Oh my God, really? It's the Bigelow Show. They want, they want you to be a guest. The Bigelow Show, that's national television. So, so what do I tell them? Say yes, of course. Yes, yes, we, we'd be happy to come. You've got to be kidding. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I was so nervous before the Bigelow show, I didn't know what to do. I'm, I'm in makeup, and I'm smiling, and I'm trying to be friendly, and my mouth is so dry from nerves that my upper lip sticks to my teeth. <laughs> the, the makeup guy put some Vaseline on my teeth so my lips would slide down. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, you didn't come off that way. You look great. Thanks. You realize what you've accomplished the past few weeks? Had hundreds of phone calls, people wanting to help and some very nice contribution. Yeah, Thatcher wanted me to let you know the ramp's going in. They've already converted the doors, and they're working on the restrooms. Not bad for two weeks' work. And speaking of work, Thatcher's been watching your interviews. He's been pretty impressed by it. Hmm. He'd like to offer you a job in public relations. Wayne, you'd be great at that. Come on, Patty, you know why he's offering me a job. You bet I do. I've watched you these past weeks, too. 
Yeah, look, Patty's right. Why don't you knock that chip off your shoulder and take a better look at yourself? When people like you, they listen to what you have to say. If that isn't what it takes to be a PR man. I don't know what is. Look, he sent over a proposal. At least take a look at it. Huh? Wow. Not bad for starters, huh? And a company car. Yeah, fully converted so you can drive it. I haven't driven a car in years. What would you like to take it for a spin after dinner? What? I took the liberty of driving the car over tonight, just in case you happen to accept the proposal. He accepts. I guess I accept. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's it, you know. It's all the same, except for the brake and the accelerator. They're both up here. Nothing to it. <laughs> Ready for a spin? Roger. All right, uh, just take it easy, you know. Drive around the parking lot a little bit till you get used to it. Gotcha. All right. Hey, I'm driving. I'm driving. All right. Tell you what happened. I was brilliant. Can't be scared <laughs> to death. I'm a natural for this job. It was made for me. I got right in there, and I had ideas, and they really liked them. And they weren't just being nice to a guy in a chair either. They really liked them. Great bunch of people too. There's this guy named Fred. Funny guy. Mm -hmm. We hit it right off. What are you grinning at? My PR husband. No cooking for you tonight. We're going to go out and celebrate. Are you sure? I mean, you've been working all day. Yeah, ain't it great? Now go get dressed. Yes, Master. Tell you what, after we eat, we'll go to a drive-in movie. A drive-in? Yeah, we're due. And, you know, we haven't been to a drive-in since high school. We need to do a little necking, huh? Better not let my father hear you say that. You know how daddies are about their little girls. No, but I'd sure like to find out. You always wanted kids. Four of them, right? Two of each. Right now, I'd settle for just one. I'm not afraid anymore, Patty. I know it's kind of sudden with a job and all that's happened, but I feel like I, I feel like I'm ready for a family. I know I can take care of them. Starting. It didn't used to stop us. <laughs> we didn't used to sleep together either. Is that an invitation? Mm. Yes. Accepted. Mm. Huh. Turn it down, would you? 
got a problem, man? No, I don't have a problem. We're just trying to hear the movie, okay? Keep it down. You know, we're just a few citizens watching a movie, trying to have a good time. And you come out of nowhere screaming and shouting demands? We're just trying to watch the movie, OK? We're just trying to listen to the movie, all right? <laughs> all right, just trying to listen to the movie. I'll tell you what, man, once you get out of your car, be a man, huh, and then tell me what to do. I want to go. Wayne, please, I want to go. running away over the right thing. There were five gang members looking for a fight. Just forget about it. It says punks from the drive and they followed us. Be ready I'm going to skip breakfast this morning. I got a presentation to make and I want to review it. Oh. Hey, you're not still upset about last night, are you? No, no, you were right. That's history. Good. Well, don't forget to pick up the tuxedo after work. Tomorrow's a big night. I'll remember. I got to get going. Okay. See you after work. And don't forget. To pick up the tuxedo. Mm -hmm. Sorry. You should be. I'll see you later.
done. Will you look at this? I pick up this tuxedo at the rental place. Look at these sleeves. Couldn't you just use the stuff and make it fit? Oh, I could, but I think you're gonna look funny with a little bitty short arms, you know? Oh, that's cute, John. That's really cute. Come on, I have to give Wayne Man of the Year award. They asked me to. I guess I know that's the phone. <laughs> What? Well, you're not sure of that. All right, I'll, I'll tell you what. You stay right where you are. We'll find him. And don't worry. Jonathan, that was Patty. Wayne didn't show up for work today, and she's afraid. Jonathan? Jonathan? What are you, huh? I'm the old man, remember? The one you tried to ride off the street last night. That was you? So you ain't got no legs, man. No wonder you couldn't fight. Don't try it, Vato. I'll tear your legs off just like mine. What are you gonna do, huh? You, you gonna take us down right here, huh? You gonna kill us all? That's right. But first, you're gonna know why. Yeah, tell him why, Wayne. I wanna hear it, too. Jonathan! Hey, go on, tell him. Tell him how you went to Vietnam and had your legs blown off. Don't try it. Get out of here, Jonathan. Hey, don't worry about me being in here, Wayne. Go on, waste them. It'll make you feel better. Get some revenge on the little scum over here who humiliated you in front of your wife. Of course, don't expect the newspapers to say that. I don't know. No, they're going to say you were just another whacked-out Nam vet who went over the edge. Oh, of course not. Hey, the only thing that's important to you is to prove you're still a man. Oh, Patty's going to be proud of you, Wayne. She could tell everybody how you had a wife who loved you, how you had people who needed you, but that didn't mean anything. The only thing that was important was killing hoods like this. Hey, man. Wait a minute. Gracias, man. De nada. supposed to do it. You're supposed to introduce it. I know, but I can't get up there. Why can't you get up there? My sleeves. Oh, come on. Just go introduce it. <laughs> uh, may I have your attention, please? Your, your, your attention? Um, 
It gives me a uh, great pleasure to introduce Man of the Year, Wayne Seacrest. I want to thank you all for this very great honor. There's no question that throughout our lives, we're continually learning new lessons. We have to in order to grow as human beings. That's why we have to go out and, and teach, never stop teaching, making each other aware of the special needs and problems of handicapped people. How else can we learn unless we know? Give us a chance to get to work and we'll do the job. Give us a chance to be a part of the world. We'll make it a better world. I learned a lesson about myself last night. I, I learned that your manhood isn't measured by your legs. It's not your ability to stand tall and face a fight. Your manhood, your humanness, it's in the mind. It's in the heart. It's in your soul. Thank you all very much.